Hello, everyone. Welcome one and all to the Adobe Fonts Show episode 49. We will be 49, 49 yeah. of these sweet episodes. And it's a big one next one. What's that? It's a big one next one, 50. It's going to be lot. the big 5 0. So, everyone who's oh. here now, you'll have to come out again for that one. Uh, I think that's going to be in two weeks. So, yeah, excited to get back on a regular two week schedule. We had a little bit of a break there. We had some announcements of some new things from Adobe, which usually get announced on Tuesdays. So when that happens, we take a little break and allow announcements to come out. And then we come back to talk about what happened. So that's what we're going to be doing today. Um, I see we have several people joining us already in the chat. Let us know where you are from. I see Rick, Carol, Jack. Annika is moderating. Thank you, Annika. Wade is here as well. Oliver. Clever. Yes. Thank you all for joining. We have a pr great episode today. We're going to be talking about text effects, the new generative text effects from Adobe Firefly in Express. Uh, definitely can be a quirky feature, can also be very fun, and uh, I think can also be very useful. So we're going to be diving into that in a few minutes. Uh, before we do that, yeah, let us know where you're from. I am Ben. I am from Brooklyn, uh, currently from Brooklyn. I'm actually moving very soon, one week from today. I will be moving to Nashville, Tennessee. So still same time zone, but I will be joining you next stream from an entirely different city and state, which is exciting. Um, yeah, so... What you, what you don't see <laughs> is all the chaos. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I've hidden the chaos behind this beautiful uh society six the tapestry uh so that you don't have to see empty bookshelves and things haphazardly strewn about um okay for those of you who are new here i am ben uh i am uh, a host of the adobe fonts show as you may have guessed and i'm a content producer at adobe fonts so i produce this show as well as other videos and things and basically try to help you get the most out of type when you're using creative cloud so that's me, and I'm uh, joined today once again by with, by Jake, and I'll let Jake introduce himself. Hey everyone, I'm Jake Giltsoff. I am an experienced designer on the fonts team, which is a very, very fancy way of saying that I think about fonts a lot, think about how people are using them, and how you can best experience them across Adobe products. So. Anytime you're using text in any Adobe product, I've probably had something to, something to say about it, whether it was good or bad. Hopefully, mostly good. Yes, hopefully uh, most of the praise can go to you, not too much blame. So, you know, but... We'll see, yeah. we'll see. There's, there's good and bad, there's good and bad. There's always room for us to improve, and, and that's what I get to think about, which is a great job. Indeed. And uh, for anyone new to Adobe Fonts, I don't think we have any, but if we do in the audience, Adobe Fonts is 25,000 fonts a library of 25,000 fonts that you can use for per personal and commercial projects. So yeah, that's a lot of fonts. Uh, on the show, we try to help you navigate that and find the best ways to find the exact font that you need for the right project. If you don't know where to start, I would go to fonts.adobe.com and just check out the recommendations page or just start browsing and, and activating fonts. It's pretty pretty straightforward. It's, it's uh, really easy to get started. And then uh, here on the show, we talk to people like Jake and also other people in the type industry. We have workshops about type. And if you like this kind of thing, definitely subscribe to the Adobe Live YouTube channel and also follow us on Behance. It's behance.net slash Adobe Fonts. We have all our past episodes there as well as announcing future episodes. So check that out. If you are on YouTube and you want to join the chat, come over to behance.net slash live. We're live now and we will be able to see, answer, and talk with you in the chat. So please do that. All right. Uh, we have a short poll for everyone today. Uh, for those of you who, oh yes, have you tried text effects? So this is what we're going to be talking about today. And I have four pre-made answers, but you can fill in the blank as a, however you see fit. Um, but do let us know in the chat if you have tried this out. It is very fun. And uh, yes, you can basically get lost trying things out for a good chunk of time, uh, the time can go by really fast, just seeing what will happen, as I'm sure people who've tried things out like Mid Journey or other uh, 
image creation, text prompt type things. Um, yeah, it's easy to get lost, lost in the weeds, but it's a fun thing. It's a good thing. So. I love the, <laughs> the one of his text. What now? <laughs> text what not? Text what? <laughs> uh, it looks like a lot of people have tried it out, which is great. Uh, not yet. I like that, Oliver. Excellent. If, uh, if you have tried it out or have not tried it out, one thing we do want to talk about today and discuss as we just go through this is how you see this being useful in your projects and in your day to day or, or there are various things. Obviously this, this thing can, it, it can be very fun and silly, but, uh, we're also looking for use cases where people can actually, um, you know, create something unique and, and that really fits whatever the project is that they're, do that they're doing. So looks like nobody has text what now so far. So that's good. Uh, our marketing department has done a, a good job. Um, so yeah, we're going to dive right in uh, to the topic today. Basically, we're going to dive into Adobe Firefly text effects, and then we're going to get into Express. And Jake is going to take us through it uh, step by step. And we're also just going to try a lot of fun stuff. So if you have any suggestions for things you want us to try or questions as we go, just shoot them in the chat. Let's uh, let's dive in. Great, thank you, Ben. Um, so yeah, AI—it's all the rage right now. I think all if, the rage. If you're, if you're in tune with with the tech world, the creative world, probably even just any mainstream world right now, AI is is all of the it's all of the news. Um, and I think I don't know if if you all are in meetings at work and if AI is used so much that you are losing your mind um like i am the <laughs> i wish i wish that was not the case but anyway the good there's good and bad things with this right like we want to explore about what what the creative possibilities are with it and you know that's that's really what the focus has been at adobe right i think there's been i know that early, in the early days of this kind of generative art there was a lot of controversy and a lot of you know confusion and and unknowns and you know change is hard and i think I'm I'm really proud of the way that Adobe has been approaching this, and and hopefully we can share some of the uh, the great capabilities that we can do with some of this cool technology with you all today. Um, so I guess first first up, you know, Adobe Firefly um, is is in beta right now, um, and you can come to firefly.adobe.com. You can check everything out, and you, when you first get here, you'll get this little, little pop up modal, and it will tell you a bit about some of these. Um, user guidelines about about what's going on with this um, technology and how to approach it. And I think, you know, this is actually, you know, very plain language about what you should be doing, right? Be, be respectful and, and, and safe with it, be authentic. Um, ben mentioned about commercial use, which all of our fonts are um, available to do. But right now, while, while um, Firefly is still in beta, um, it's not available for commercial use. So bear in mind, this is still, you know, for now is for personal use only, you know, so if you're making making any designs that you're going to be using, um, you know, not for paid work, then you can try all this stuff out and use it in your, your real stuff. Or you can just take it for a spin and think about, you know, how, where it is right now um, might apply to some of your work. And I know Ben just mentioned that, but that's something that we're going to really try and dig into here is, you know, where does this technology go and how can we use it in our day-to-day -day work? So um, from the Firefly website, obviously, you know, there's a bunch of different things that we can try out right now. Text to image is is maybe the one that most people will be familiar with, where you type in some text and it generates this this image which has never existed before. And and spoiler alert, you know, text effects is is kind of the same thing, um, but it's applied specifically to text. So we can go through this little walkthrough. It'll tell you a bit more information about the service. I've read through this a couple of times, so I'm going to hit skip for now, so we don't have to look through all of that. Um, and here, you know, you can see already we've got a bunch of different examples of, of what to expect from this, right? Like we, we've called it text effects and, and I was kind of very fortunate to get to, to work on some of the early, early phases of this work. And it was super fun, you know, figuring out the best way to approach this, this new technology. Um, but it's, it's called text effects for a reason, right? Like we're not, we're not generating fonts here. We're applying these effects, these very like kind of magical visual treatments to your pieces of text right and you know here we can see some examples which is you know these types of things you know they're they're absolutely bonkers and you know to to do all this stuff 
manually, right? If you were to do some, you know, some graphic lettering, for example, this stuff would take, you know, hours and hours. And like, look at all the like the feathering on this fur. Like, it's it's crazy detailed. Um, and you know, you can you can get to it in in a couple of taps of your keyboard. Um, so what's great about the Firefly website is we have all these pre-made things, so you can try some of them out for size and see, you know, what kind of text prompts are going to work well, and you can see them being generated on the fly. Uh, Jake, if you would, just um, the bottom of the screen, yeah. move that up ever so Ooh, slightly so we can see yeah. that prompt a little bit better. There we go. Perfect. That's, that's, perfect. The, that's the important bit. There we go. So yeah, as Ben mentioned, right down the bottom here. So this is this is what we call the prompt, which is, you know, it's kind of a fancy way of saying, you know, the text that you've entered to generate this this it's kind of a, a loose colorful. a loose description of of something visual right it's it's yeah yeah and i think yeah the the key here you know there's there's this whole um i guess this whole new job even maybe of prompt engineering is is you know is this you know it's figuring out ways that you can you know what words are going to work well? What gives the best type of effects? How how do you get you know maybe you have something in your mind's eye and you're like oh I really want this to look like X and you know sometimes you know let's say say I want it to be like cabbage because um, that's you know maybe I'm 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 hungry and I, I want some some cabbage and you know maybe let's let's just do a a C for now because it works kind of a little bit better with to see a bit bigger. Um, that's still using the past one, so I hit generate here, and let's see, cabbage. Yeah. It does a it does a reasonable job, you know. But you know, this is I've given it one word, but I think you know the point being is if you want to get into more details and like you know engineer the prompt, you can type in you know as many words as possible, and you know like there's things like people go like photo realistic, uh, and you know. Um, colorful bold purple um purple we can add in colors we can do whatever we want let's see well, i guess this would be like a red cabbage i like that i like that we'll see let's see and we'll see where this goes yeah it, oh my gosh hey that's great that really i mean so yeah things like photorealistic you know like adding these kind of keywords and this is you know the engineering part is figuring out what those types of keywords are and how they apply so I'll quickly just point out a few other things that you can do with this, this interface on the Firefly website. So down here, you can see four different variants. So whenever you, whenever you have a prompt, it's making lots of different versions of it. So the one that you see is just the selected one, but you can also choose some other different outputs. And maybe you prefer, you kind of like what's going on in this first one. And um, you can also, so from here, oh yeah, just real quick, you can rate the results and that actually does help. So if you, see something right. you like after you know coming up with a prompt give it a thumbs up if you see something you don't like give it a thumbs down so mm -hmm. that'll help us in the yeah future. and as ben says this yeah the system is learning all the time and it's you know we're, we're trying to make it better better each uh each week so keep playing with it and keep trying things out um again there's a few other the things over here on the on the right side panel as well so the sample prompts are a bunch of things that you know ideas that our, our content team has been playing with and think you know these ones are working nicely so try try these ideas out right because sometimes you just have that like blank blank text box uh, <laughs> challenge where you're like oh i can't think of anything um which is potentially my worst nightmare being on the live stream right now uh, <laughs> but ho hopefully i've saved a couple of little prompts in my back pocket so um then there's some other things you can change here as well um so Obviously, you know, we're thinking about these these effects applied to our text. But in some cases, you know, things, you know, this isn't just like I want to mask out the letter, right? Like you can see, you know, it's really going around the, <laughs> the outside of that cabbage, yeah. right? It's, but we can choose the level of detail here as well. So if we want it to be like, hey, maybe maybe it should be a bit tighter. Maybe it's it's not quite enough within that letter form. And, you know, maybe this isn't the best example because it was already kind of, you know, it's not doing too much. And let's see if loose gets any any more funky. So a little, <laughs> little more on the really. edges, a little bit. Okay, well, here's, here's another example, though, right? Of like, you know, maybe this this cabbage is being a bit uh, uh, 
sliced <laughs> on the edges. Yeah. So right, it's 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 expanding out beyond those those bounds of the of the letter form. So you know, in this case, I don't know if I really like that. So I would probably go back to you know the medium. I might like stick with something more like that. Now, obviously, we're we're talking all about fonts as well, right? So on the Firefly website, we we kind of preloaded this with a few font options, which which you know we've tested out and work quite well. You know, generally, you're probably going to want something that's that's fairly bold, um, that's going to give you enough kind of area that's you know to have some sort of effect applied, right? If it's if it's super thin or super small, you know, you're not really going to get much. I don't know maybe maybe some things will work well with it but mostly you know you want to stick with something a bit bolder um but over here right you can change a couple of the fonts so here's his cooper black one of my favorites you know you get some of that wonderful curved serif action going on this is I, this is actually a really good one it's I looking think. really I good i know i'm i'm kind of shocked that, that cabbage cabbage did so well um then of course you know you can change some some other things here as well. Now and this this comes to helpful when you want to export some of this stuff, right? So you know maybe you want to take away that background color and have this you know like a a PNG so you can you know drop that straight onto something else. There you go, like it's it's fully cut out. Um, and another thing we can do, right? So we added purple down here in in the the prompt, but we can also choose a text color as well. So you know there's two ways of kind of going about it, right? You could have applied you know that sort of purple color in the colors or in the prompt um it's, it's kind of either either works and yeah you could fine tune that i don't really know what how it would handle having purple and yellow applied to it yeah who's gonna which like, who's gonna win i think the text prompt is gonna win it looks like well i mean it's it's bringing that that kind of yellowiness into it is. you know the 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 veins of the leaf so yeah. well i guess it kind of does both um so you know there's a lot of different things that you can try out in um in the Firefly website alone, and you know, like there's there's some other fun fun things to do. Won't we try out a few other few other prompts? I know I know we were on the, the food theme even with the the preview of this right with bread. So what what other food stuff? Won't we try like a charcuterie board. How do you spell charcuterie? I did not there know how. Go. There we go. What letter do we want? Let's do an M F. or F. Why don't we do both? Let's do both. It's a little nerve wracking. <laughs> I know. Nice. I mean, this is the thing, right? It's like you can think about these things in your head, but you, you have no idea really what, what this, the system is going to come out with. And this is, like, you know, this is the power of this, this generative AI technology is it's, it's taken in thousands and thousands of images and it's using that data to form these you know brand new things yeah so yeah you don't really know what you're going to get out of it and it's you know part of this this process of, of you know playing with this tool and using it for design is you have to experiment with it you have to try things out um because you never really know what you're going to get and, and sometimes you know it, it can be a little frustrating when you have an exact thing in your head because you might not know the right words to find to get that thing looking like how you wanted it to um so there's a couple of things you can do there, right? Either you have to be okay with it being, you know, this, you know, very kind of iterative process of trying out a few different things, or, you know, maybe using it more as a, a mood board for something that you you might later on fine tune in other methods, right? Bringing yeah. in Photoshop and, and tweaking. Another thing you can do though, is um, the way that Firefly um, is built, is it, it's built off the Adobe stock library of content. So, if there's something that you you know you really want it to look just like something if you can find you know i'm seeing a suggestion here about grass grass effects for annika so you know like what kind of grass do i want right so if you go into stock and you look at some different grasses you know then you can think about which are the keywords that i would get out of of these images and I don't know how descriptive these are going to be, but right, this one, this one would be a super cool effect. Um, so what you can do, I mean, obviously, green grass texture is the name, so that's pretty generic. But you can also look down um, below, and there's all these keywords that have been applied. Um, so you know, you can copy and paste these keywords and drop them directly into Firefly, and that can be like a nice starting point. Mm. Um, 
to to get things right because sometimes you just can't figure it out um okay let's try this out then so O with a text effect of the earth i like where this is going why don't we try and expand that out a bit um planet um lush green and blue Ooh. <clears throat> This is where you have to you know, tap into your, your your creative psyche. Oh my gosh, this looks amazing. Wow, that was a great idea. Um, but yeah, you wanna think about all these different descriptive words and you're know, getting into this way of thinking, I think is gonna become potentially even more and more of our work with this these, these AI tools, right? You have to be able to- Kind of finesse them the voc through, voc through language, yeah. yeah. Right. I mean, it's, I think it'll be interesting. Let's see what happens if you just type in earth, right? Does it Does it give you that same, same sort of thing. Maybe it does. Maybe maybe you don't even need to do these. I mean, it's kind of a bit more dull. It's kind of gone a bit bananas with these uh, these like islands. Yeah, um, well, it looks like we're almost getting scripts or letters of some kind. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's clearly like finding some other stuff. Um, I wonder if you can put even like a starfish in as well. Oh, look at that. This is like a starfish island. Very cool. <laughs> now I kind of want to see coral reef. Coral reef. Okay. Should we start from scratch with coral reef? Yeah. Gosh, how do you spell coral reef? What should we do? Another letter. G. Yeah, G's meaty. There's some stuff to chew on. Mm. We can also try out another font if we want. Ooh. Ooh, look at that. That was a great one, Ben. And I bet we can customize that with the color as well. So like, you know, like a more, oops, that's the background color. Let's change the text color. There we go, get some of the pink coming in. Nice. I feel like, you know, I wish this was almost like 3D. It feels so, so tangible. And, and like I know. I mean, detailed. I obviously I can't, I don't know for sure, but it seems to me like at some point you will get a 3D model out of things like this or, or a vector. Right. Or things like that. Amazing. And you'll be able to tweak every single part of it. Um, How fun would that be able to like 3D print like something like this and have it like, you know, I'm, I'm that kind of type of person who has all the big letters and, and bookends that are else. A and Z and all that stuff. Exactly. Big so ampersands. Yeah. Would be, would be, I would love to have that as a thing. Um, okay. So while we're still in here, I, I want to, I want us to jump over to express and, and try out a few other things, but while we're still in here, I want to try out one other thing, which I was thinking about and I actually haven't tried this. So, well, we'll need to check how well it's working, but um, why don't we find it? One fun thing I was trying out in the early days of Firefly was making your own, oh my gosh, right. making your own that emoji. That is a little terrifying. Yeah, this one, okay, this one's a bit much. That's So we have an Australian Shepherd. Um, Gosh, spelling is the, the hardest thing to do when you're being watched. Shepherd? Is that right? We'll find out. Um, I didn't know you could do this so with yeah, emoji. And, you learn something new every day. Yes, I know. Whoa. Uh, yeah. So yeah. So this is this is right right now in in the uh, Adobe Express beta. The emojis aren't aren't supported just yet, but in, in the Firefly website, you can type in, in any character. Um, I want you to make it red. Wow. Um, so, you know, if you have your own pet, okay, that's gone a bit too red. Whoa. And maybe it was a bit better before. I was that's looking a little um, menacing. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Demon dog. Yeah, sometimes they can be a bit dem demonic, but um, but anyway, if you have your own pet and you wanna you wanna customize an emoji for them, like maybe it's a cat, maybe it's a dog, you can come in. Um if you find the emoji picker on on either your Mac or your uh, Windows machine, so I think on Mac it's like you hit 
control command space opens up the like the little emoji picker and you can drop in another fun one i saw here was um the rocket emoji um and i don't think we want to <laughs> hello my dog is now a rocket. Um, uh, rick, rick asked how did you add the emoji so you did on the mac you did control command space yeah and it brings so, up this yeah. emoji picker yeah, so I think it's I think it's um, on most. I don't know the way I have it set up as well as I have I can access it from my top menu bar where you can click on like view emoji and symbols. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, it'll, it'll either open up a mini version or sometimes it opens up this big one. I don't quite understand why. Um, but yeah, you could, this this lets you you know type in and you know if you want to try out you know some funky other things right you can use this to add in you know maybe you want to make a a cool star pattern with with all this stuff going on or whatever right like it's and, you can access and right this now this is characters. on the firefly site but hasn't come to express yet so just heads up everyone if, in case you missed that not just yeah i know emoji emoji is always a very trendy thing but right now you can only play with this can you do a, kind of a secret secret little thing can you do melting popsicle for this rocket oh like a yeah How do you spell popsicle? Popsicle? I think it's an okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I guess what we should do with this one is go loose so it will really get those drips going in. Oh, Carol asked, where's that character viewer? So I think you can find that, Carol, in the system preferences on a Mac. If if you open up the system preferences, and I believe if you go to where is it? Keyboard. Oh, is that how this shows up up here? Yeah, you can add, let's see, shortcuts, input. Okay, we'll have to do some research for you. Well, I think it, it's it's the same thing, right? If you hit, if you if you're on Mac and you hit con Control Command Space, you should you should get this thing pop up. Yeah. So another way, obviously, is you know you can copy and paste an emoji from somewhere else as well. So if you have you know if you're on on Google and have a, a yeah, that's right. Uh, if you search, if you just Google the emoji, you can use that as well. Yeah. Yeah. All this does is is basically like you know copy and paste it in for you. Um, now I want everyone to brace themselves because sometimes this goes a little bit. Actually, wait, let's look at this popsicle first. But we can do some faces as well. Sometimes they get super creepy, so we'll see. That might might be too much, but um I feel like maybe we need to get a bit more detailed with this popsicle one because it's you know it's it's trying, but it's you know, this is you know, I was talking a bit about the you know this match shape feature, but this is why you would want to have that loose fitting to have the because, drips you know, coming then off. Then you can really get yeah. 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 Um maybe we need to make it more like, you know, ice summer um colorful and it's already colorful and i wonder if we should also turn off this text color so it, these settings also stay around so if you tech turn off the text color completely it will then ignore that you know it won't add in that red that was being put there as well so then let's hit refresh and see where we're at Ooh. Looking a little. I don't know if this is quite quite what you had in mind. Looking but. a little funky. Not gonna lie, it's getting funky. Okay, we want a fire effect on the rocket, and then A for Adobe. Okay, we can do it. We can do an A. That's that's a good one. That's a. We should have started with A. That would make more sense. Okay, so flames, fire, um, booster, rocket. Cool. These words are making me think of Guy Fieri for some reason, but very, very Fieri. Ooh, that is kind yeah. of fun. Also, you probably all can. No, it's quite what we are. You can probably all tell it got really dark over where I am, so it's suddenly <laughs> thunderstorm clouds outside, and I, I'm basically in. I normally am near the window, and so I get the sunlight in here, but now it's just my screen glowing my face. So bear with me. That is very creepy. 
Well, I'm also visiting New York this week, so I'm glad that uh, I'm inside. And the New York office has this very fancy streaming setup. So you can see my wonderful like green screen background that Ben shows this synth wave background for me. So um, anyway, let's jump, let's do that A as well. So A and we wanted what we wanted some cloud, cloud effects. What, um, oh, now we've got a fire rocket here. Um, cloud, sky, mm, bright day maybe. Yeah. Mm, fluffy. I feel like you got to think of all these extra, like, you know, synonyms nice. and, and additional words to. Well, this one's fun. Some of these really do look like Wonder almost stop like motion, it. if that makes sense. Like, yeah, they look, I mean, you know, even when, I mean, I wonder if you can, you know, so then, you know, add in photorealistic again. Whoa. We just made a cloud and then the thunder came. Whoa. That was creepy. That, that was creepy. That's crazy. Also, Annika, uh, Annika asks, Ben and Jake, where do you see the text effects being applied? I think just in general, a general question about where we see these being applied. Mm -hmm. And I was going to ask you the same so, thing. It ha have you just naturally messing around with it, designing it, you know, coming up with the uh, you know ideas around it, thought of mm -hmm. use cases that you think really are real world use cases? And I'm sure we'll get into that a little bit more in yeah. Express too, but. Yeah, no, that's a great call. I think, I think you know, Obviously, you know, here we're looking at one character at a time and, you know, instantly from that, you know, it's, it's, you know, drop caps immediately not, came to mind for me. Exactly. Exactly. So, I mean, it's not, you know, it's not the most typical of use these days, you know, drop caps was, you know, historically, you know, a cool thing in, in old printed books, but, you know, I think there, there is a time and a place for them as well. Right. And it, you, you could imagine, you know, you're making a children's book and you need to do these, you know, imaginative lettering things, right? Like that would be would be perfect for that right and you, you know you can even do that typical thing of you know like that, that animal alphabet where each letter is an animal you know a for oh, yeah. b for bet like it, like that type of thing you know those letters like you know the the time that goes into making all of those like you come up with something super imaginative in in a few clicks and and even if it was just you know as a mood board for that type of thing that would be would be one example um and then i think you know the the other types of use cases are you know, it has to be big text, right? Like as soon as this gets kind of small, you're going to lose a lot of these details. And that's like really why we are looking at one character at a time. Um, you know, you can do a word, you can do a few words, you, you can probably even do a, a kind of a short sentence, but right, this, ha this has to be kind of, you know, it's almost more like lettering than than text. I feel like it's, it's, it's an illustration type thing. So, you know, um, we need to change the sky. I'm getting scared. By it. I know someone by said the, uh, someone said dark know. gray smoke effect, but I think do dark gray. Uh, that's gonna make it lightning gray. thunder. Yeah, dark gray. Are we doing American gray or British gray? Let's do American gray. Dark gray smoke thunder lightning. Scary. Let's see where that Ooh. gets us. Ominous. Ooh. Ooh, okay, well, it's gone. It's gone down more the smoky, right? This this feels very, you know, like Voldemort esque. Very Voldemort. And like this is one where you'd want to use loose instead of tight, probably. Yeah, yes, yeah, so we have loose here. on it now. So if we if we went to tight, it would probably be a lot more constrained again, which is still kind of cool. Still cool. Um, I also see like very, you, you were saying, Jake, like maybe a word, maybe a sentence, yeah. but. To me, right. like if you had a word, um, you know, if you look at invitations uh, or flyers, yeah. generally you have one or two big words, which is like, let's party or exactly. come join us exactly. for Jake's birthday and birthday is really big or things like that. And it's like, that's the use case that I see real world. Uh, exactly. Right now, exactly. Immediately. Um, yeah, I mean, even, even eye catching text on, on social media, right? Like on a, like an Instagram story or something, right? It's just one big word. And why don't we take this as a, a chance to jump over to, to Express, because I think we can, you know, try out some more of these real use cases, right? Because, you know, like all, all of this is, is super fun and, and, you know, I feel like it gets the, the creative juices flowing. 
but yeah, I think, you know, at the end of the day, you know, I think, um, you know, like, you know, word art from the nineties, right. used to be this kind of like loved and hated thing because, you know, it gave people a tool to make these super cool looking, you know, pieces of word art, literally. But, you know, they became so generic because they were used so much. And, you know, you saw any any printed flyer would um, would have that same thing on it. Whereas these, you know, your creativity is unlim unlimited with it, right? It's, it's like word art times a thousand. You can you can do anything with it. So, you know, there's there's so much potential with them, I think. I think it really takes some some thought though in thinking, you know, what is the right appropriate use case? What do I want to do? Um, oh, Pete. I see we have a comment about yeah, um, yeah, Photoshop. So the text effects right now actually aren't in the Photoshop beta. Um, so the Photoshop beta uses um, if we go back, they use well, I guess they use the the generative fill, which is like another piece, which is still powered by Firefly. The text effects piece right now is is only available on the Firefly website. <laughs> it's a scary thunder, or in Express. So, um, so you could you could a look at on the Firefly works. site you could download a ping a ping with a transparent background, bring that into Photoshop. Yes, not a, the most convenient workaround, but totally doable. So you could do that if you wanted to work with it in Photoshop. That is a that's a great call out. Yeah. So if you, if you had any of these and you yeah you set the the transparent background. You can hit download, um, and um, we'll apply the content credentials in it to say it was made by AI. We'll give you this um, this download. It will have a little watermark on it, um, but then you could drop that straight into 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 uh, Photoshop, and you know maybe you want to tweak some things there as well um, based off this. So uh, in Express, text effects are obviously we want to start with some text. So um, I've already been playing this a bit earlier, as you can see. Um, so there's a couple of ways you can go about it, right? So um, this is and this is the new Express beta, by the way. We haven't talked about this too much just yet. I know on the last stream we showed off a little bit, um, but this is available to everyone. If you go to new.express.adobe.com, you can try out the new Express beta. We are packing this full of new features every week. Every time I come to try it out, there's, there's new stuff, which is amazing. I'm, I'm loving this. So right now, some we have these new text lockups, which have come back in as well. These are super fun to easily drop some text on your canvas. If not, click on add some text. You've got all the kind of text tooling that you would expect. You can drag things around nicely. Let's add in, I don't know, let's let's use Ben's name as a starting point, right? Oh, we want Jake. To make this nice big. I know. I, I just I just can't get enough of Ben. I'm so excited that we're in the same city. Um I will quickly point out a couple of other cool features in Express. Um the font recommendations. We up top here we have, you know, these straight away we see some recommendations for cool, cool fonts that you could try out. Um now we for for um the text effects you know we're going to want something super bold probably you don't have to but it's going to make it you know give us that there's more, more surface area there's more so, meat yeah more meat to chew on that that's quite the saying but yes that's that's what, <laughs> what we need we need the meat to chew on <laughs> now um and the text panel right so yeah but there's all the kind of you know you can make things bold italic you know we got the, our alignment options all that great stuff. Um, but then if we scroll a bit further down, we get access to these these text effects. Um, so this is the same same capability powered by Firefly, and it just brings it directly in to Express. Um, very similar, right? So we've got the these sample things again. So you know, you can click on view all, and you know, we've got a bunch of pre-made ones. I got to sit in with a session um, with the content team when they were they were playing with this actually, and it was so fun just seeing everyone's, you know, creative juices flowing. There was a lot of food <laughs> that came out and some of my favorite ones are food, like I don't know, gingerbread cookie. Let's see where that one goes. Whoa. All I can think about is, is thunder, thunder and scariness. Um, so again, right. So the same options, right. We've got, um, we've got tight, medium, loose. You can choose the font here again. Um, and, and, you know, you've got the same kind of four up of the different options. So, you know, maybe the one, first one wasn't quite right. So you can choose some different results. Um, 
we have a great question in the chat as well. And so the fun thing, I think the best thing about this version of it as well is you actually get access to a ton more capabilities, right? So on the Firefly website, you know, we, we've given you a few startup fonts to play with. There's, there's a lot of options with, with colors and everything. Um, but here we actually get access to all the Adobe fonts library. And you know, you, this is this is all still live text. You know, it's, we've got the effect applied, but you know, we can resize this. It, it behaves just like text would. We can do, you know, we can change our letter spacing. You know, maybe you want some really, really tight, tightly spaced gingerbread. Um, like all of these capabilities um, are so helpful, right? It helps us tweak this stuff, and you know, it really shows off that this is still live text. So I can keep keep typing in there if I want. Um, And then, so yeah, you can see it takes like a second to, to regenerate, but then, then yeah, you know, if I want to change the, the weight of this, right, you know, why don't we try out in the, the thin to see how, how it does. Oops, I need to select the text first. Then I come over to the, the style picker and I can go to light. It's going to take a second to think about it. You can see that loading state there. And then it's going to reapply that same prompt to this piece of text. And then you go, you know, you can kind of see that, you know, it looks less like gingerbread, more like breadsticks, but I think, you know, yeah, it kind of works though. It right? Works. Like, so now this is where, you know, this is where you, you get that, like you really start playing with it. Right. Cause you know, you could totally do like an ampersand here. I don't want we do Ben and Jake. Um, uh, ampersand Jake. Let's do all caps. Um, uh, I'm going to need to make this a bit smaller. Let's drag it around a little bit. Let's... Nice. Right, we get the full control here in Express, right? So the letter space, the line spacing as well, right? I can drag everything in a bit more. There we go. This is shaping up. I zoom in. I've got some weird ghosting going little on. Artifact. Here. So let's go back. Yeah, so let's go back into the text effects. So that's if you scroll down this panel on the left hand side, you can come over here. And we probably want to go for tight with that one because it's, you know, it's giving us some extra stuff, which we don't quite need. But why don't we change that into like pretzel, uh, mustard, um, what else is this making you? Breadstick. Let's see what that does. It's so funny that I'm drawn to the, all these like, you know, <laughs> food um, style prompts because, you know, food typography is totally its own thing. Like there's a whole, there's a whole like, you know, people make these amazing creations um, using actual food. And this is, you know, this could be even a fun way to sketch out some of those ideas, right? Like, oh, for sure. you know, imagine if you could get a, a breadstick that was in that, that ampersand style. Um, Anyway, so that was a very quick overview. Um, another way, if you want to jump straight to this, right? If you've come to Express, um, so I'm just going to zoom out a little bit. You know, you have a blank, a blank document. Um, you can even jump straight into the text effects. We have this right down the bottom here. So you know, normally you would just add some text at the top or drop in, you know, a cool little pre-made thing. But if you want, you can jump straight to these text effects. And again, you know, we've got some of those pre-made styles for you to, you know. See how they're made. Look at some of the the inspirational things. You know they've got the font applied to it um, already. Gosh, this this floral one looks cool. Um, oh, that looks really cool. You, know, you can use this use this either, either straight out of the box, or you can you know use it as inspiration to to tweak for yourself. Someone on YouTube suggested ice cream effect on our names, but we could also do it on dry. I think. But oh wait, I can I can you know as this is expressed, I can just hit command z a bunch of times and there we are. you know it's a full design tool so i'm going to go back to the boulder weight though because i think that will be more fun for ice cream um just because i'm i'm very you know detail oriented i'm gonna tweak this even more oh look at this oh i love this that that it's is a very pretzely ampersand i'm not gonna lie it is it looks like you could take take a bite right out of that um, okay, ice cream. Um, I know we're already running out of time, so I want to make sure we do get to some, you know, more real use cases as well to show, you know, some examples of what we could do with this. So let's go back to text effects. We don't want the, the pretzel mustard breadstick anymore. We want ice cream. 
I'm going to need some more words for here for this though. Let's think. Yeah, sprinkles, um, uh, cone, cold. waffle cone, waffle cone. There we go. We want to be as descriptive as possible. Waffle cone. Let's see what happens. Generate. <laughs> we might want to play with some of these sizing again. Oh, this looks more like a. Looks like a pop tart. Uh, it, yes, uh, yes. I don't know where we got. I guess they've gone for the waffle bit. Maybe, maybe we, maybe we went too far with the description. Sometimes you try and add more to make it, you know, more um, visual, but sometimes it just changes it entirely. My gosh, we're still in in donut land, aren't we? Really, these look just like donuts. Yeah. Or a sugar cookie I mean, with sprinkles wonder, on top. Right. I wonder if we go a bit more loose, if that will do anything. While that's loading, I'm just going to jump back to stock. Let's see if we can get some good like ice cream words. Or Sunday ice cream. That could work, couldn't it? Ice cream Sunday, yeah, that, that, that could help. Or like banana split. Oh, gosh, where were we? Annika mentioned the sprinkles is probably what's throwing it off. Yeah, I know we did spend a good long time trying to figure out the perfect donut example for this as well. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Now we're getting there. There we go. Although this ampersand is amazing. That is bonkers. It is bonkers. It's still it's still leaning all in on this, you know, like pop tart with ice cream on top. Oh, very much. Wow, look at this episode. It's like a, a lot of soft serve in amazing. there, too. Yeah. Wow. Nice. Okay, well, let's, uh, you know, we've only got a few more minutes. So I want to, you know, dive into some real world about, stuff. You know, yeah. Real, real world. And I, I say this, you know, in a fairly loose term, I was, you know, I was, of course, over the weekend going to watch the Barbie movie. Um, and we even got to host a Barbie party with a bunch of our friends. Everyone got dressed up. There was lots of pink. It was amazing. So I was trying to think about how we could use this technology to, you know, sparkle up this. To bar um, barbify this? To, to barbify the, the invite that, that I made. Um, I actually made the invite in Illustrator, and I totally regret it because it was so much easier to do and you know as we're running out of time i'm just going to skip ahead a little bit to one that i i here's one i made earlier um you know basically what i did here is i put in a shape um, with a border i found these pre-made shapes so you know if, um, express has all of these elements that you can quickly grab you know these shapes um it has these like little icons that are like all here so like this took me like a minute to just quickly drop stuff in um i i did some research, of course, into the font that was used on the Bali poster. They do have one custom one, but they also use Avant Garde Gothic Pro, which is available from Adobe Fonts. So I got to put that in. And then, you know, this one I think we could probably actually do a bit more digging into. Right? I was trying to think of, you know, you know, we want to keep this word kind of big, right? Like maybe, maybe I don't know what's what the best word for this is, but like, you know, it's, you know, we want to try and, you know, have some wow factor at the top. Um, I went for this, you know, diamondy bling one, but maybe we can do a little bit better than that. Um, so, if we have any suggestions um, for for um, the perfect prompt for the Bali, um, let me know. I think you know we want something sparkly. We want something. I don't know. Maybe we can do like a, a fluffy, furry one. Yeah, um, like a like a shag rug looking one yeah uh, fluffy um muppet let's see what that is we M muppet just see okay. what happens yeah How do you spell that? two p's i think yeah there we go there we go i know i didn't see up and up behind it just just yet no i i went i went for the the right choice which is probably um here we go here we go nice. this kind of works isn't it i think you know we need to work a little bit on the contrast with this pink on pink um but there's definitely something here um 
I know we can maybe even tweak this design, right? So we could bring this down as like, here's the face, we've got the star, we've got the drinks. And this is what I love about this, you know, Express is like, it's a full fledged design tool. It's got all these like, you know, all these things built in that you can just drag things around super easily. Um, let's why don't we make this background a bit lighter. Uh, custom. bigger always makes the but you know you can you can start to get the kind of the feel for you know like you know when you're thinking about using this for you know something more real um i think there was a question about seeing one option so there are um if you're asking about you know the, the different results you can also dig into oh wow this one looks kind of good um you can also dig into other results from those same prompts as well like you can keep loading um I think as many as you like um uh, and it will yeah we'll have all those variations there um but you know sometimes you know sometimes some characters start to break apart a little bit so you need to pick the just the right one and then you know from there you know you might see okay this this fur is you know now i need to tweak the the spacing a bit more let's add a bit more spacing you know maybe it's a little bit of a rotation to it someone in uh on YouTube asked, are these text effects print ready or do we have to upscale them in Photoshop? That is a great question. I think for now, the resolution is mostly focused on, you know, on kind of screen resolution. And I think I actually haven't um, heard what the plan is. So I don't know, you know, what the future plans are for resolution. Um, I'm sure, I'm sure we're working on it. I haven't been working with that team um, recently but yeah i think the idea is you know once we come out of beta right because firefly is still you know something that we're testing out i think the, the future plan is that likely it will be something that you can print you know when it's ready for commercial use especially yeah. um but yeah no, for now you know if you're making your own you know your own little invite for, for a barbie party and and you know it's just on on a screen that's it's going to be good enough quality um sparkly blue reflective diamond ben how are we doing for time do we have do we have time for one more we have time for one more one more okay let's try this one out then i'm just gonna copy and paste because typing is for the birds i don't know what that means but okay okay sparkly blue reflective diamond maybe we should choose another font as well Let's let's go with medium. Ooh, okay, here we go. Very bedazzled. Oh, I I actually really like this. This is super cool. Now this kind of reminds me. I had this um this one that I kind of have loved. That if you add in um. These were some keywords that I found to so detailed ornate antique. Um, let's see where it goes with this because it, it was doing some really cool stuff with it when I was playing with it a while ago. Um, okay, well, it's still kind of a dazzling. Um, and another thing, you know, maybe this is slightly less Barbie, but you know, um, you think about like Mexican tiles um um that was another one which was super fun but probably not quite right for the barbie movie but you know this is maybe the maybe the trap that you it's get into. Oh, there we go all great. right we could do this basically it's, it's forever stuff, which is it, kind of the point we have to stop um we're going to end it there. It Everyone fun. go check out express new dot adobe dot express dot com. I think it's that's what it is. Um, but Annika has the link in the uh, in the chat. Go check out the Firefly text effects. If you'd make anything cool, maybe share it with us on the next stream. And uh, yes, go check out behance.net slash Adobe fonts for all previous episodes of the Adobe fonts show and future episodes. Follow us there. That would be fantastic. And if you have any tips, or thoughts or feature requests or font requests or anything, 
adobefonts.uservoice.com. Uh, let's everyone in the chat thank Jake for taking us through text effects in, in on Firefly and also in Express. And stay tuned. We have Voodoo Val next with Create Tips after this. So stick around for that. Jake, thank you once again for joining us on the Adobe Font Show. Thank you for having me. And uh, we'll see you all again real soon. Bye, everybody.